So I'm Randy Hansen. I work for Concur uh, currently, and um, as was mentioned before, we do integrated travel and expense, which is not that sexy. Uh, so what I am going to talk about today is about the importance of imagery. So first, I'm going to start with a little bit of an embarrassing uh, uh, happening that, that happened on Sunday to me. So I'm a big dog advocate. Um, I do rescue work, and I do it for bully breeds specifically. And who here is from Seattle? Very many people. Are you familiar with the Furry 5K that happened at Seward Park on Sunday? It's a great charity event for the Seattle Animal Shelter. My husband and I got all geared up. We're getting with our bully breeds. We're going to get walking for the 5K. We've done some charity. And we're about a quarter of the mile away of the 3K. And my husband and I are talking to some people with dogs besides us. And they decided they wanted to go ahead of us. So my husband kept me off, I tripped, <laughs> and as I was falling down, I hit the back of my dog's butt, <laughs> my head, and gave myself a whiplash. So um, I'm sure you guys can imagine all of that with that. There's lots of images in there for you. The dogs, the runners, me falling, me giving myself a whiplash. So I might seem a little stiff today. Um, so if you're gonna come up and talk to me afterwards, please don't hug me. <laughs> Don't shake my hand really quickly. I might, I might like to scream ouch. Okay, uh, so the first image, this is when Pope Benedict was inaugurated. You guys may have seen this image, you may not have seen this image. This is from 2005. I love this woman down here looking at the camera. So you can see there's, um, there's only maybe two cell phones in this image. Um, I'm sure you guys all had a cell phone in 2005. I had the Razor. Really cool phone. I thought it was cutting edge at the time. This is from, from when Pope Francis was inaugurated. This is in, this was just last year. So you can see the real difference between just what happens in an eight-year period. So 2005, 2013. And I think it's incredible that this guy is using the iPad to take a phone call. I mean, you guys have all been to concerts where the guy's got the iPad up trying to take. It's so annoying. You're like, why? Um, really, just, just use your phone. So this, you might think that I might parlay this into social and how imagery is used in social, but I think we all get that. Selfies can be embarrassing, awkward, you look great, you don't look great, you look silly, you don't look silly. But what I really want to talk about is how you can use imagery for your search marketing purposes and for some advertising. Oops. Keep doing that. Okay. So if you do an image search for the term businesswoman, whether you do it one word or two words, these are the search results you get. Does anybody have a reaction to that? Is this how, how businesswomen look? Yeah. Cross their arms. Very serious. Very, very serious. They're in clusters. They're always wearing black. This is not anything like what I work with at, at my job. And I work in a pretty conservative company. I mean, you know, I'm someone that comes in with tattoos and wild, you know, gestures and a lot of excitement. So I just, it's interesting to me that this is the top search results for businesswomen. So you guys may have read or heard that Cheryl Sandberg, I think that's interesting that she shows up here, worked with Getty Images to come up with what real women look like in the workplace. You know, you can see women of various ages working from home, in a warmer environment, wearing real clothes, maybe even working out. So it's kind of, it's funny because when I was doing the original search, I actually had to put my nude um, filter on because I got a lot of nude images of women. I'm like, who goes to work nude? <laughs> I mean, no, it's crazy. So um, I thought this was a really great campaign with Getty Images um, that Cheryl Sandberg did for her Lean In because um, you can see a lot of women in, in a lot of different situations, doing a lot of type of business work, or maybe not business work. One image that I kind of focused on was this one. So this is from a news article where they're comparing the modern day image of a woman versus what was traditional. So this, this pinup girl is actually available for sale on one of the stock photography sites. It's like, how many people do this? New work. <laughs> and, and I just find it really incredible. But the women on, on the other side, I think, is powerful 
She's obviously a woman of trade. She's competent. She's in her workplace. I mean, this is a legitimate, authentic photo of a woman. And is this really just about women? Or is this how people are portrayed in general? I mean, look at the reaction here to these photographs. So this is when you type in businessman. I mean, what, what's the reaction there? It's totally accurate. He's just <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny because I mean the white background. It's you know it's very stark. This person can be anywhere, most likely in a photo studio. Um, so either they're doing these cheesy stances, like I'm gonna shake your hand, or I'm like I'm confused. What are my workers doing? Um, it's kind of interesting how it's it's not just about how women are portrayed, but just how people are portrayed in general in imagery. So um, I don't know if you guys were aware, but recently Amazon, this was in the news here in Seattle quite a bit, received a patent for a technology that they're using to take a photograph with a white background. It's just ridiculous. I mean, who gets a patent like that? I mean, and so all the photographers are up in arms around this, so there's been quite a few articles written about how this is an old technology, that items in front of a white background is pretty common. As you can see here, this is a Getty Images image, but I pulled it from the article, where it's just a kid saying, really? Why is this happening? Then I kind of started thinking about, well, what about imagery in general? Like, how is imagery being used um, in, on the web. And so I went to a couple of news sites in the Wall Street Journal, as we know. Their, their print publication starts off with a pixelated photograph, um, usually of a CEO, but it's a very text-heavy newspaper. Um, their web presence brings in a little more imagery into it, which I think is fascinating. Um, they're trying to draw the eye in, but again, it's still very, very text-heavy. New, the NBC News site just recently released, I don't know if you guys have been up here for this, but they're leading with images, which I think is amazing. So it's an image headline, you click in to actually read the text, see the video, whatever the content might be behind it. So I think this is a great way for them to convey emotion. So we can see the expression of the people that it's being written about. This came from yesterday. From Friday afternoon, or Sunday afternoon, pardon me, um, where you have a lot of outrage or confusion or something like that where you're trying to gain the emotional connection with somebody. And this is what images can do for you. They can convey an emotion with your audience. And that can be if you're a B2C, if you're a B2B, if you're a retailer. This is something that you can use to really draw people in through advertising and on your website. So this actually isn't new. Bing has been using images as their background for quite some time, which um, I think is really fascinating. They put up a photo of the week. There was an article written about the process of choosing and selecting uh, the images they use. Uh, something that's been around for a while. Uh, but what's interesting, it's still making an impact. My girlfriend was on Facebook a couple days ago saying that she totally got lost in her Bing page because she was just fascinated by the information she was getting around this. So this has improved search on Bing because people go there to see it. And you can see that the success of that because now Google is now putting up certain images on a weekly or daily basis to get you more involved as, as education. I'm pretty sure you guys have all seen that. Or the video where you actually have to play a game, which is really cool. So getting back to our advertising and how we're advertising and the images we're selecting. So this is an active ad that I get through my email um, as a sidebar of my email. It's Drew Carey, who happens to be a local person for Seattle. He, he is one of the co-owners of the Seattle Sounders, which is an exciting organization for us. Um, 
What I find interesting about this particular ad is, did Drew Carey really lose weight because of whatever is being advertised behind this? Um, when you click through, you go to an actual diet site targeting women and attacking their self-esteem. Uh, but I just think it's interesting. It's like, how long ago did he lose his weight? I thought maybe eight or nine years ago. So we're trying to still use celebrity imagery to exploit the product, if you will. And then, I know you guys made a lot of Facebook ads. Like for me, it's they've gotten a lot better. Um, they're definitely more targeted. But in some cases, it's still very difficult to see um, what the image is or what they're trying to convey. So as you guys are thinking about doing Facebook advertising, be sure to use something that you can read. Um, I'm looking at the SC Lauder ad, which is actually from Macy's, where I think that what they're trying to sell me is a cosmetic pack, but I can't quite see it, even in large print this bit. So something to, for you guys to think about is, how can you convey what you're selling in, a, in an image that's gonna work for the format that it's in? This, this particular image might work for a larger based ad, but it won't work for a small based ad. But I thought it was interesting because the Moz ads, you can easily identify it. Um, the Zappos, you can see the shoes. Those weren't the shoes I looked at, but they're kind of cool. I might buy them. And then recently, my washing machine died on me. So I have been searching on Home Depot and Lowe's and all those sites to figure out where can I buy a new washer and dryer that might fit into my house. So what I, what I thought was interesting about this particular ad is it actually retargeted me correctly, but it's got these two items over here up at the top, which, what are those? Why are they showing them to me? They're showing them to me because while I was on chat, I had to find out what else I had to buy in order to make it a stackable unit. So one thing to think about is as you're retargeting through the GDN or whatever means you're using, you might want to think about what you're tagging and making sure that you're serving what's actually relevant. Because these two items are like 15 bucks each. The bigger purchase is the washer and dryer, right? So I'm not saying we're perfect. We've got some issues going on. <laughs> um, so these are our kind of global ads that when I arrived at Concur that we're currently using, which is, I mean, what's this? That's kind of crazy, huh? Or all tax ads. Or some guy with a thumbs up. Expense recording rocks. Why? Because I can do expense recording. Um, yeah, and, and then uh, this, this image of a woman, which actually isn't too bad. I think it's overall the whole format. Doesn't really say anything. Why is she expense reporting? Who knows? So what I've been thinking about recently and, and where I'm thinking about going with our advertising that Concur that we're running through Google Display Network or even what we're thinking about doing for text is trying to make emotional connection. And I think Someone who's done it really well recently is Apple. And I know it's hard to emulate Apple. It's, they, they have a huge budget, it's tough. And I'm gonna show you ways that we're thinking about it after this, but they, this is for their new iPad Air commercials. You've probably have seen this. This particular advertisement was on New York Times. And they're highlighting their customer. So how's their customer using this product? And why is it relevant? And they do a really good job. They have a whole series of these that um, are out there. And what, what I struggle with is they have a really great campaign where they're highlighting their customers. However, when you go to Google image search, what, what comes up is, a, and you type in Apple or Apple advertising or Apple customers or Apple iPad Air, what comes up is images of their logo. It's all logo. And I, and I keep thinking to myself, they're kind of falling short of being able to get these type of images and Google image search that will help build their profile in the search marketing environment. So there's ways that you can do that. So how we're thinking about it is, um, last year we did a big campaign where we highlighted how many customers we, customers we have, our customer logos, and that kind of did okay, but it didn't really connect. So we got very low click-through rate on the GDN for these. Um, 
And when they got to where we had our case studies, nobody did anything with it. It was like they just bounced. So we started thinking about the, what we're calling VOC squared, which is very easy for us. It's voice of concur, voice of the customer. So we're really trying to elevate our customers and how our customers use our products, how our customers think about us, and also people in our organization that can reach out to a community. So this is something we ran just a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is Elena Donio. She is our EVP of small business. So we did a video of her and we did a big ad campaign. And we got huge click-through rate. And I think because there's a face behind it. And the content that they're getting to is about Elena talking about why small businesses are important to concur and how we can help them. So it's about getting away from spreadsheets because no one likes spreadsheets. It's more about getting towards a community and building a community around us. So we got really, really high click-through rates, I think because there's a face behind it all. And this is something we launched on our website yesterday um, where we have a new product that we're releasing. And one of the things that we decided to do was really highlight our customer. And so this is an actual customer using the product. And so we have posts about throughout the entire page around her. We'll do a whole Anna campaign around it. She's on the video along with the big product manager that worked on this particular product. So um, for us, you know, showing people who use it. And I'm not saying that's particularly right for your company, but I think putting a human face and making connections is really important when it comes to advertising. Because we can do a bunch of words on an ad, but if they don't know what, how to connect with you, it's just not going to work for you. So that's all I have. Oh, wait, sorry. I guess I have one more slide. But I didn't. So I don't know if you guys use Google Trends. Um, this is a great way for you to directly understand if the, the digital advertising you're doing out there is actually having an impact. So this happens to be a year-over-year -year perspective on our brand term. And Google can actually give you real data around this now, which is awesome, because um, it does, what I see from the Google Trends, it directly correlates to what the data you can get um, from your Google rep for a paid search. So what's, what's great is we started doing major advertising starting around um, January of last year, and we've seen a huge delta in the number of searches. So something for you guys to consider, because one thing that I think about paid search is that it's a, it's a poll marketing channel. Um, you can only pull in customers from search marketing. So if you do more Google Display Network, get it out there, um, do retargeting based stuff, but you can kind of see a lift in your brand terms. Does that make sense? This is a great way for you guys to use it. Um, I use this internally at Concur to get more budget for doing digital advertising. It makes a big difference. Okay, that's all I have.